Now, the former US ambassador to Australia, Mr Geoffrey Blyche, is back in the country for a whistle-stop trip. As chair of the Fulbright Foreign Scholarship Board, he's here to spruik a major new grant that will allow even more Australian students to study in the United States. And to explain the details, Geoffrey Blyche joins us from Sydney. Mr Blyche, great to see you. Good morning. Yes, well, it's great to be back in Sydney, and uh, and thank you for having me on, Michael. Tell us about these uh, these new scholarships. We know the Fulbrights have been up and running for many, many years, but uh, what are these new scholarships? Yeah, well, the, this is the 69th anniversary, and there have been over 5,000 scholars and students exchanged over the years. But these are four new exciting ones that are focused on kind of this new era, and so it's strategic studies. Uh, technology and innovation, uh, which is really defining our future. And so uh, it's a perfect time to have these new scholarships. And uh, I got to meet all the scholars last night in Canberra at a special event. And, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're, they're pretty intimidating. They're a lot smarter than, uh, than I ever was. That's true. They are frighteningly intelligent. Uh, I've always discovered that when I'm in a room full of Fulbright <laughs> yes. scholars. Uh, you make a very important point there, Geoffrey Bleich, about yeah. innovation and technology. We all know that uh, the Australia-US defence relationship, the strategic relationship, the intelligence relationship is very tight. So what are the, uh, what, what's the importance of strengthening that technology, that uh, innovation relationship? Well, if you look at where the, the greatest opportunities and also the greatest threats are coming uh, upon us, uh, they're all in the technology space. So our ability to deliver more services to more people and to improve the quality of life and lengthen and improve human life uh, and, and reduce our dependence on uh, dangerous fuels, all of those things can be addressed through technology. On the other hand, uh, if you see what Russia is doing to try and undermine democratic self-governance, uh, when you look at how uh, various bad actors are trying to use cyberspace uh, as, as ways to create asymmetric attacks uh, against Western democracies. That's where we really need to collaborate. And so uh, I look at it as both a great opportunity but also a great challenge. Yeah, are, are there gaps, significant gaps, I guess, in our uh, technology knowledge, both here and in the United States, as both countries combat those threats? Yes, I mean, if you look at what uh, Russia did in the last U.S. election, that is uh, that will be the norm in Western democratic elections going forward. They've put out a blueprint for how you uh, start confusing the public about the facts and turning people against each other, and that can create a um, both an apathy and it can lead to the rise of authoritarianism. And so it's a it's a real threat, and we need to start taking it seriously and combating it and developing the tools to stop it, expose it and uh, prevent it. OK, and uh, how long have Australians got to uh, put their hand up for one of these brand spanking new scholarships? They should put their hands up immediately. Um, the, uh, uh, the application started February 1st already and so uh, don't hesitate. These are, we, we, we are sending our best and brightest uh, to one another's shores because that's always been the secret to our success and to our alliance. Now, uh, you are, of course, a former ambassador of the US to Australia. Uh, what, what do you make of one of your uh, successes, possible successes, if he's confirmed, of course, Admiral Harry Harris? Yeah, well, if, um, if, if the Senate shows the good judgment that I hope it, uh, it does, then hopefully by the US summer, Harry Harris or Admiral Harris will be US ambassador. And I got to say, uh, he's going to be fantastic. He's smart, he's strategic, he's loves Australia, he understands the relationship, he's got a great sense of humour, um, you know, he can, he, he, he can uh, you know, handle uh, uh, Aussie wine and, and also, you know, uh, having someone take the mickey out of him, he's going to be perfect. The, in fact, the only, the only thing I'd complain about with this appointment is that um, uh, everyone's going to forget about me. He's going to be, he's going to be the new uh, gold standard for ambassadors and the rest of us are going to fade into the past. I'm sure you won't, Jeff Blyche. In fact, speaking of uh, people making the right decision, you're in fact hoping Californians, in your view, make the right decision because you're running for the position of Lieutenant Governor in the Golden State this year. Uh, how, how's that That's going? That's right. That is going well, you know, despite the candidate. I think uh, people are ready for a change in our politics and you saw that in 2016 there was a frustration with um, both of the parties and a lot of people didn't even bother to show up in the 2016 election. A lot of people showed up because they wanted to blow up the systems and I thought what we need to do is start showing the government can work and 
some of those, some, some of the things that I am uh, emphasizing are things that I witnessed here in Australia, particularly with respect to um, gun policy. Mm -hmm. You know, the Americans are just overwhelmed that we can't solve a problem that Australia has. And I've said that I've seen it done, that uh, you've stopped mass shootings by eliminating assault weapons, compre providing comprehensive background checks, and having gun buyback programs. And we should be doing the same thing in the United States. We've seen a bit of a ground, well, just on gun laws, a groundswell of, uh, of uh, change or demands for change based on the Florida high school shooting. Do you see that as a possible trigger to, uh, and excuse the expression, obviously, to serious changes in gun laws? Yes. <laughs> I, I think there is there is always a moment, and I remember in the fight against drunk driving in the United States, it was uh, a terrible incident where mothers uh, came together and created Mothers Against Drunk Driving, and that was the, the turning point. I see these young people in uh, Parkland, Florida, who say you are either on the side of protecting children or you're supporting the forces that are killing children, and it's that stark, and they have been so... Um, sincere and genuine and impassioned and real that it has woken up a lot of interests that had thought we couldn't accomplish anything. When you see corporations walking away from any support of the NRA, when you see Republican legislators preparing to stand up and take on the National Rifle Association, when you see Democrats who had lost their spine in the past and are now willing to lose their seats in order to do the right thing, uh, that's when change happens. OK, Jeffrey Bice, if I was living in L.A. or San Francisco, I'd vote for you, but I can't, sadly. So all, all the best for uh, the big election <laughs> contest this year. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm counting on the Aussie vote and also all the Elvis fans in California to put me over the top. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks again, Michael. It's great to speak with you. Good stuff. Uh, former ambassador there, Jeffrey Bice, and uh, a very important scheme. The Fulbright scholarships have been in place uh, as Jeff mentioned there, for 69 years. And the great form of, I guess, soft diplomacy between the two countries. Americans coming here and Australians going over there. My husband was lucky enough to be a Fulbright Scholar mm. and he went and studied at Stanford University and had a fantastic time there and has made connections that have been incredibly useful for, for every you know, young journalist he's ever been involved with and tutored yeah. and edited. He could sort of hook them up too. So, um, yeah, it's a great scheme, so get on that.